We want to warn you that the next story has images of frostbite damage to hands. Almost two months after a dangerous cold snap, some Kansas Cityans, including Chiefs fans, are now facing life changing decisions. Fox 4's Dave DeMarco is live at Research Medical Center with the details tonight. Dave. Christelle, the medical director here at Grossman Burns Center, says 70% of the patients that she saw for frostbite after that bitter cold are now having to schedule amputations. Burn survivors gathered at Research Medical Center for a second annual reunion tonight. Jack Daly came to the Grossman Burn Center in July when the heat index was 110. I had a, a lighter that I light the grill with, and I also had a aerosol spray can there of spray paint, and do the heat with the grill combination, the lighter exploded, then it ignited the spray cannon. But the burn center is now dealing with injuries from far different weather conditions. People think of burns and they think of fire, they think of hot thermal injuries, but burns can happen from many different causes. Garcia told us in January she'd already seen dozens of frostbite patients, many of those Chiefs fans who attended the playoff game where it was negative four and a wind chill of negative 27 at kickoff. The images you're about to see show the severe effect of frostbite from a Chiefs fan who took his gloves off for five minutes to put up a tent. Patients who had their frostbite injuries during that cold snap that we had along with the Chiefs game, they're just now getting to the point where we are starting to discuss their amputations that might be necessary. And for the estimated 30% lucky enough to avoid amputation after undergoing treatment the past few weeks in hyperbaric oxygen tanks. is still a lifelong process. They will have sensitivity and pain typically for the rest of their lives and will always be more susceptible to frostbite in the future. So we're also educating them to make sure they stay warm over these next months and years to come. Heartbreaking and amazing there. You know, I've heard of a player, Ronnie Lott, having his finger amputated before to avoid surgery and be able to play. But I don't know how many fans would have actually signed up for this or would have made different wardrobe decisions if they knew what they are now facing. We were hoping to ask one of those fans that tonight was supposed to be on the speaker list for this reunion, but he didn't make it out here. Now, for more on exactly just how bitterly cold that night was and hopefully a warmer forecast ahead, let's send it back to Alex in the Weather Center. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Uh, obviously, uh, going back to that bitterly cold day in Kansas City, actually we had several days of this kind of cold, right? Uh, the Chiefs against the Dolphins January 13th. By the way, this was the coldest Chiefs game in Arrowhead history, along with a top five coldest NFL game ever. Kickoff temperature minus four, the wind chill minus 25 to minus 27, depending on where you were in the metro. Frostbite time took at the maximum 30 minutes. You saw there and uh, uh, during Dave's package there that frostbite can occur in five minutes in these kinds of conditions. As far as coldest games in NFL history, that playoff game against the Dolphins, that was the number four spot. Number one, some of you might remember uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, the Packers and the Cowboys in the Ice Bowl, New Year's Eve 1967. The second place spot was the Freezer Bowl in Cincinnati uh, back in 1982, minus nine at kickoff. They actually had a minus 59 degree wind chill there uh, in Cincinnati. <laughs>